We have the honor today of having Dr. Yuha Hernes Niemi. Dr. Hernes Niemi is a neurosurgeon at Henan Provincial People's Hospital. He is professor and chairman of Yuha Hernes Niemi International Center for Neurosurgery in Zengo, China. Right now, at the 2021 IWBNC, Dr. Hernes Niemi is going to share a lecture on surgical strategies on previously called aneurysm. Please type out your questions in the Q&A panel. We will read them after the end of Dr. Hernes Niemi's intervention. Welcome, Dr. Hernes Niemi, and thank you. It's all yours. Thank you very much. It's a great honor to speak for Colombian audience. I have visited several times Colombia, beautiful country. And now, during these times, it's good connections again. So I speak about surgery of coiled aneurysms. And this is certainly very hot topics as endovascular surgery is getting more and more common. So this is the, my background. Before China and other countries, I have been working and made my lifetime work in Finland in two centers. Kuopio and Helsinki, 97, 2015, I was the chairman in Helsinki, neurosurgery, and out of these two centers, we have a very good database with more than 18,000 patients, with more than 22,000 aneurysms, exact data in the databases, and what is most important, uh, very good follow-up of all the cases. So this is possible only in a small country with very organized system. Out of these 18,000 patients, I have operated more than six and a half thousand and the present lecture is on a small part of it. More than 100 call aneurysms is my personal experience. So in Finland, the site of aneurysms are given here. Middle cell artery aneurysms are the most common, one third, and then come otherwise with the CT angio, basilar aneurysms are also rather common, one sixth. To speak about endovascular surgery, I'm many times accused that I have no perspective of endovascular surgery. I have a long time perspective. So when Serbinenko published his uh, balance, detachable balance from Burdenko, Moscow, my teacher, Dr. Lauri Leitinen went 1975 to Serbinenko and found out the secret of this balance. And then we called Nokia, who was that time doing rubber shoes, not telephones. So we got soon these small balloons and we were experimenting in the night in, the, in our hospital with rabbits and we published also a small small publication 1978 came out unfortunately my name remained out even I was involved this may happen many times so and uh, when in Helsinki we had a lot of visitors more than 3,000 people around the world came to see our surgeries and I had 100 fellows. So you see here, Guglielmi visiting us in front of the world map with the needles, then Ling Feng from China. And of course, the uh, Professor Jack Moray, co-worker and opponent all around the world when discussing about the options of aneurysm treatment. So nowadays, quite frankly, I have to say, if open cerebral vascular microsurgery wants to survive, we have to be good and efficient. We have to be both in that respect. And to be good and efficient, you need, you need a good team in operation room, like in ice hockey, six players on the ice. This is Helsinki, extremely skillful, the scrub nurse, and this is now how it is here in China, Chengzhou, Henan Provincial People's Hospital, the same, same set, good scrub nurse looking at the screen and instruments are flying without speaking. Good anesthesia, of course, is also needed. 
So I have used this lateral supraorbital approach in most of my aneurysms since 80s. And there's a lot of discussion about the size of the flap. The flap should be large enough for your skills, for your instruments, for the lesions. There should be no competition because the patient is paying that. And this is the drawing of Hu Shen, my first Chinese fellow from lateral supraorbital approach in paraophthalmic aneurysm. And this is the subtemporal approach, which I began before going to Drake and PLS. But this is a nice drawing of this subtemporal approach for basilar tip aneurysms. To speak about temporary clipping, we wrote with Dr. Drake PLS that temporary clipping is very important. And after these sentences of Dr. Drake and PLS, I have used this sentence written by me, use temporary clips more often than not. This is very important in doing aneurysm surgery. So it is old myth that neurosurgery should be endless and tiresome. We can do it very fast. I saw one example and then we, I will go to the coiled aneurysms. Here is simple microsurgery, four aneurysms, two on the right, MCA, one on the left, MCA, and then basilar bifurcation, and with skilled microsurgery. This was done very quickly, as will be shown here. My Turkish fellow put the timelines there. I don't try to be fast, but I make clean surgery, and this makes your surgery fast. And here you see how fast is the lateral supraorbital approach. In six minutes, I'm opening the sylvian fissure here. Nowadays, for me, it takes more, but at that time I was doing a lot of cases. So I was, uh, I had a good flow. What is this hell? There's uh, some advertisement coming, so now, okay. So now we are opening the right sylvian fissure. There are two aneurysms and both dissected, but not yet clipped because we have clips would prevent surgery for the contralateral aneurysm and basilar bifurcation aneurysm. So we let it be like that. And then we go to the contralateral MCA aneurysm. These are, of course, unruptured aneurysm. So the anatomy is extremely clear. <coughs> so you put temporary clip on the contralateral M1. And then with the help of contralateral temporary clip, we clip this contralateral bifurcation aneurysm, slowly letting the clip close, taking the temporary clip out, and then checking that no perforators are taken, lifting the aneurysm and coagulating it down, checking carefully here, and then we go for basilar tip bifurcation aneurysm. Peak hum is very small to be able to come to the basilar tip from the same approach. So I coagulate down between perforators, peak hum, and cut it. And then I have good access to the basilar tip aneurysm, make posterior clinoidectomy with sonopet. And then this aneurysm is good for temporary clip. I put a temporary clip on the basilar artery. You should never try to clip basilar tip aneurysms without temporary 
clips proximal control and now we have the proximal control and then we put the clip on the base of this aneurysm and of course in basilar bifurcation the most crucial thing is that you don't take even a single perforator because then the patient will be disabled so this is extremely important now the clip is going there and then we should take the temporary clip out the movement here is coming from the mouth switch. I'm using mouth switch because this is 40 years. So it makes the surgery very fast and you can change the angles always. And I operate standing. It seems, for me, it seems that there's one perforator, but maybe it is too vain here. So perforators are free. And then what I'm doing now, just replacing the clip. It is also important moments to come back to the clip handle and to chase the clip. And now taking the temporary clip out. And slowly taking it out. So this is the game is not over after clipping you have many important steps to do and then we go back to the right Sylvia Fischer I tried these clips new form of clips but the, that time I didn't like them because it is difficult to come inside the handle when you want to replace the clip and then coagulating down the aneurysms And then another aneurysm will be also treated, right MCA aneurysms. This is, the difficulty is to replace the clip. This is one of the important things in aneurysm surgery. You should not, never be happy with the first application of the clip. You should be move the clip several times. And now going with this clip there, and then yeah, 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 yeah. I don't didn't like these clips, but it is also of course personal selection. And then this is all for analysis treated, and then we close. Closing takes around twenty minutes. So sorry for showing the basic of analysis surgery. Now we should go to see the coiled aneurysms. This is a video of, a short video of, made by my Peruvian fellow, PhD, Johan Schocko. In the 1001 videos, this is a pericalosal artery aneurysm coiled and very, with very big regulation. Pericalosal aneurysms are difficult to be treated by endovascular means as the callosomachina artery is coming from the base of the aneurysm. The same counts for M1 aneurysms, basilar superior cerebellar artery aneurysms, and vertebra pica aneurysms. This is not well known. And these aneurysms have many times coils, stands pushed in there. So you see the big base of the aneurysm and callosal machina arteries coming from the base of the aneurysm. You see now also the coils. This was a ruptured aneurysm. You see hemosiderin there. And what I'm doing now here, this is so-called what we call late surgery. I'm taking the coils out. It's more difficult to take the coils out when you're operating on late, one year after the coiling. So, but it's possible, it's small aneurysms. Big aneurysm, like we will see, it is many times difficult or even impossible. So this was a good outcome in that. And then we go to the next one, it's 
Sorry. No, this way. It's running. Okay. So we go to the next one. As I mentioned, MC aneurysms are the most common aneurysms in our material. And unfortunately, they are nowadays also coiled. And this is nonsense because they always recur. You can put in LinkedIn, Facebook, WeChat here in China, beautiful immediate results. But when you follow up longer time, then you will see recurrences. And you should have good follow ups. It's nonsense to publish immediately. Immediately. You can be happy and proud, but the, the message should be different. Different. Follow up your patients. This is, of course, in big countries, is uh, for several reasons difficult. In China, nearly impossible. But also in Latin America, it's very difficult to follow up the patients. I know exactly. In Finland, we could follow up all the cases. So here you see, I went with my clips there. And now, MCA bifurcation, I'm checking with Doppler what happened. M2 branches are closed because the coils push me down, push the clips down. So this is, we ha I have to take the clip out and have other solutions. I have to open the aneurysm. And this looks now rather dangerous job because I'm not leaving a lot of the base just to be able to take all the base inside the clips. You see there are small pieces of coils. I have to take them out to allow the clip to be closed and then additional clip there. Your pride should not be that you take all the coils out. This is nonsense. Many times those who are not experienced are saying, why didn't you take the coils out? This shows how, how little they know about that. So the main thing is to have the aneurysm base exactly clipped. Here we have a post-operative DSA of this case. So we see the perfect clipping and some coils remained. I think the next one is also uh, MC aneurysm, like mentioned, most common. Another MC aneurysm here, a larger one, you see the compaction of the coils and filling of the aneurysm and also that the coils are inside the M2. So this is complicated thing to do how to manage this one. So this is also late surgeries, one or two years after coiling. Patient was coming abroad to Helsinki. This is IGT. And then in this case, we have to use temporary clips, M1, M2, and then open the aneurysm and take the coils out to be able to take the base of aneurysm. I cannot take all the coils out because one part is coming from the base of the aneurysm and going inside M2. And I let the coil, some coils be inside the clip. And then I have to travel with the clip because Otherwise, M2s are closed, so it is always complicated. Complicated because the mass of coils is pressing the clips down. So I'm taking the clip out, second clip out after the traveling, and then I take the temporary clips out, three of them, and then I have to put one clip there short clip to take the base. This was a bleeding because I had to open and then I take, uh, still remove some of the coils of the 
from the base. You should, as mentioned, you should not take all the coils out. It is no pride to take to take all the coils out, only those necessary part. So important is to have the base free and so be able to clip the aneurysm properly at the base, leaving the vessels open here, checking with Doppler. And then ICG done. And this is post operative CT and show you see other side there were also coils and the patient made good recovery and went a few days later home. So important things here, like I learned from my teacher, late professor Charlie Drake, be so honest that it hurts. And it hurts when you have poor outcomes or poor results. And most important hint here is follow up your patients, make long time follow ups. You will leave surprises like will be seen in the next slide. Here is mentioned 2001. I operated with Professor Yasakil in Helsinki, 70 years old female with carotid bifurcation aneurysm, beautiful clipping. Control angios, beautiful. And what happened? Seven years later, I had to operate on recurrent giant aneurysm in the same site. So we never know if we don't follow up the patients. So here are some of the recurrences. Here, you see, this is in the loose coils are here in the anterior circulation aneurysm, but this is not a question here. You see that the basilar bifurcation aneurysm has recurred, and there is a de novo aneurysm at posterior cerebral artery, in this case, followed up for more than 10 years. Here, basilar bifurcation aneurysm operated on twice, coiled twice, and then recurrence, recurrence, and I solved that by going from the left side here by subtemporal approach. And then I had the good uh, taking all the clip. Here a patient, middle-aged male, subarachnoid hemorrhage, beautiful coiling of the large aneurysm in another hospital. But then four months later, the patient had this compaction of the coils and big recurrence. So what did I do after long discussions? I operated by subtemporal approach. And what happened in the operation when I had temporary clip on the basilar artery and I put the clip around the base of the aneurysm? Wonderful happiness. But then when the clips closed, then the aneurysm base broke out and there was big bleeding. I had to occlude the basilar artery and the patient died six months later, crippled. The wife remained thankful that I have tried, but this was of course a terrible disaster. Why failed? Because the coils are here compacted. This is like a stone hard ball. And then you, when you put a strong clip there, then there is a pressure on the clip and the, the base of the anus wall will break. Here, one recurrence of the clipping around 20 years later, basilar, the superior cerebral artery aneurysm clipped with high fetch clip that time. I remember the case very well. It was 1979, so more than. Uh, 25 years later, you had this recurrence, which I operated on also. So to speak one more video, to speak about the difficulties of this aneurysm. So here is a giant basilar tip aneurysm coming abroad, aneurysm ruptured. The patient was 
crippled cat my tetraparesis and swallowing difficulties what has happened compaction of the aneurysms and when the coils are pressing the brainstem after a long time negotiation we came to the conclusion with the treating neurosurgeon that we can grip the base of the aneurysm and I made right pressing mode approach to come closer to the base here this is trochlear nerve there and dissecting what is the difficulty here after subarachnoid hemorrhage a lot of scarring of course the coils may also cause scarring so difficult anatomy but we were thinking we are doing extremely well here in the operation. Carefully dissecting this uh, Kamiyama schizos and then finding the base of the aneurysm. And, uh, Somebody asked me why I didn't take the coils out. It is not possible. You will kill the patient if you try to get the coil compacted inside the large basilar tip, giant basilar tip panels compacted, and inside the brainstem, you will call this way, uh, kill this way the patient. So we tried our best to have the base free a lot of scarring and temporary clip on the basilar artery and then further dissection. And with the help of the temporary clip on basilar artery, we take a ring clip, fenestrate clip. My, my teacher, late professor Charlie Drake, always told that when you are dealing with giant aneurysms, you have the first clip must be fenestrated clip because it stays on the base of the aneurysm, it's not slipping out. And then you have to close the hole. So, and here we have the, I think this is a superior cerebral artery to be preserved. Above, you see the third nerve. Third nerve is always between superior cerebral artery and posterior cerebral artery. These are the landmarks here. So one ring clip, changing position and adding one more tandem so that they close the hole. And the length of the clip must be 1.5 times the base of the aneurysm. This is very important, simple knowledge. Not longer, but not also less. Changing the clips, then we should do ICG. Now to see, checking that no perforators are there. Weakling, one more clip there. And changing the position of the other one. And uh, we thought this is beautifully done now. Every, everything open, we didn't see any perforators taken and we thought everything is okay. But what happened after surgery, the patient was worse because of the many artifacts, we cannot see the perforators, but we think that one of the perforators had difficulties in, in perfusion of the brainstem and that's why the patient remained even more crippled after surgery than before. And these are post-operative pictures. Aneurysm totally taken, but the patient remained crippled and didn't have good outcome. So severe disability followed, even he was that before operation. So 
So this is the only case with stand I have operated on. The young patient had uh, his aneurysm treated with the stand, and the patient had uh, re-bleeding. The re-bleeding re -bleeding became came unconscious to us. We made in the night emergency operation and took the hematoma out and but, uh, clipped the base of the anus, but it was nothing, not so much to do because the patient was grade five. So this is the only one. With the stands, you should be even more careful than with the coils because the stands prevent most times the temporary clipping which is so useful in treating these aneurysms. So this is our series published 2011 with Rosanna Romani. 81 patients in the 10 years up to 2009, 95 or something. 10, of, 10 years, 10 plus years, 81 patients. One third were in posterior circulation. Two thirds had uh, 66 had late surgery. Late surgery. This is more than one month after coiling, and 15 had early surgery within one month after coiling. So, what are the conclusions and results? Complete removal of coils is difficult in late surgery because one part of the coils is outside and they are inside the scars and even inside the. the arteries and complete trial, complete removal of coils is associated with poor outcome. Poor outcome in these cases was when aneurysm ruptured during operation, when the aneurysm was large or giant size, or when the aneurysm was in posterior circulation. This was <coughs> the conclusions. And so this is how the outcome in long term, long term we speak, one year or more was 71 patients had good outcome, four had severe disability, like the patient with the uh, giant basilar tip aneurysm, we saw the video, and six died with long term follow up, three were in poor preoperative condition, but you, when you follow up the patients, crippled patients, then you see many deaths in pneumonia, pulmonary embolism, and other general complications. This is very important to report also, always. Once more, large and giant aneurysms are a big challenge, even in the best, best hands. In some cases, biopsies might be helpful, Difficult to help in posterior circulation, but in MCA aneurysms, certainly when the aneurysm is filled with foreign material, clipping is very difficult. You have to look at the anxious preoperative that you have enough base for a clip. And long-term follow-ups are always needed. Early publishing of these cases is nonsense. This is seen all the time, every day. You see foreign material pushed inside the aneurysm. And of course, the neurosurgeon or endovascular surgeon is happy that you should be patient and have a follow up. Not to say that new technology is here. We need follow ups, like I have shown and mentioned. So, some words more. Why microsurgery is going down? Why are we losing our skills? There's a lot of business in this treating of aneurysms, and there's a lot, lot of nonsense speaking that opening of the head is dangerous. This is used to have the patients uh, for endovascular treatment, not for perfect clip on the base of these deadly sacs. This is so that those who are opening the head in dangerous way, they should stop their activities. I think I have showed this slide in Colombia 15 years ago when being there in a Congress. So nowadays there is heavy control of the surroundings, society. Social media is reporting everything what you are doing. 
you cannot continue with the flow of complications and poor surgery. This is very important. You are observed all the time. You are not alone in the operation room. Everything what you are doing is followed. And why microsurgery is going down? Why are we losing our skills? There is deep cap, fears, lack of skills, poor training, and very important, love of comfort. This is wonderful sentence from Drake Peerless Hernes book, book. And this should be always in your mind. If only we could have back again many of those who were lost or badly hurt for a second chance in the operation room with what we have learned. This is extremely important sentence. So simply told, but this is advice for our life as neurosurgeons. And we have to remember our memory is very short. It is maybe three months. Only with good databases, you can find all the cases and all your complications and excellent uh, results. So to speak about open microsurgery, we are not the last Mohicans, but our number is getting smaller. We are alive and also the open microsurgery is getting all the time better. Many of those cases should, uh, which have now coiling stands inside should be initially treated by skillful microsurgeons because after pushing some foreign material inside treatment is five to ten times more difficult even impossible so and what is important not the walls but the team is doing the work even scarce resources different from this arabic hospital you can do beautiful surgery when knowing anatomy and have microscope and microsurgical instruments in this hospital, even nearly diamonds on the wall, but poor surgery. So this is different how the house looks. So you can do good surgery also in the trivial conditions. And I would like to thank all the Personal, I have been working around the world. For me, they have been always the best personnel. So I thank you very much. Kitos, say say ni. Okay. So thank you very much, uh, Dr. Hernes Niemi, for such a wonderful lecture. Uh, we have a few questions from the audience. Okay. So the first one, yep. The first one is, um, would you recommend temporary clipping for any particular case? Is there any case that you recommend not doing temporary clipping? Uh, here in China, atherosclerosis is extremely common. So to put the temporary clip on atherosclerotic proximal arteries might be dangerous, but otherwise I'm always using. But here many times I cannot use. And here also not use adenosine like I used many times in Helsinki. So I'm using always when the proximal artery is good, I wish I'm using always temporary clip, short temporary clip. Okay, thank you. Another question here is, um, in a previously quoted aneurysm, when would you choose surgery instead of re-endovascular treatment? Uh, this is a good question and difficult question. Usually it depends on the local circumstances. The patient has been treated by endovascular, so this is the endovascular patient. If they ask me help, then I take a look I have to have a good base for the clip. If there is not a good base for open base for the clip, then you should be very thoughtful. And depends on the site. If you see a, a giant basilar tip anodus with compaction of the coils, you should be very careful. 
the same counts for MC aneurysm. You should maybe do in this in this case a bypass. So it is uh, usually the one who has made the first treatment should make the responsible things. What the endovascular guys are doing, they push more coils and stand there, and then follow up. Usually gives also recurrence, but uh, this wise not to attack this cases if they are not your patient but you can you can do something but it's five to ten times more difficult than to uh, clip a uh, virgin aneurysm without something inside it okay so whenever you can do surgery you would prefer to do surgery right if the patient is mine if the patient is mine this is the difficulty here. The patient belongs to some someone else. I can give my opinion if I get the patient and, and if I can offer a safe surgery, then I will do. I will do. But uh, okay. the practice here, for example, in mm -hmm. China and all over the world, is that they push more coils and stand. And it's not, you should do the right thing first time. Yeah, for sure. Okay, um, we have another question here. What are the main differences of clipping a native aneurysm versus a previously clipped? Are there any considerations in choosing the clips? I thought I answered these <laughs> questions in my lecture. You didn't listen carefully, but maybe you can see the recording. But the, how to choose the clips? The, Clip length must be 1.5 times the base of the aneurysm. This is one of the trivial things. And when operating on giant aneurysms, the first clip should be a fenestrated clip because it stays. And uh, then otherwise, you have to have a good selection of the clips and be, be flexible during the operation because the Circumstances might be totally different than you think before operation. So good amount of clips, long enough or proper clips, not too long or too short. Okay, thank you. And the last question here, what are the challenges faces, faced by microvascular neurosurgery in the middle and long term? And, uh, in life or treating animals? No. What no. was the question? So Can you micro, microvascular neurosurgery as a subspecialty. What are the challenges that that subspecialty is going to face in the middle and long term? Ah, okay, okay. During the times of endovascular surgery, of course, <coughs> difficult even to begin aneurysm clipping. So you should, when you want to have a train, you should go to the centers which are doing regularly many cases around the world. There are that that kind of centers, but the endovascular surgery pushing microsurgery down. I think uh, in good cooperation with endovascular surgeon, with hybrid microsurgeon, you will have a good balance in that, but I, I think it is nowadays is more difficult to select uh, vascular surgery, but you have to think also that there are other things than clipping of the anus. There are operations for AVMs, there are bypasses which belong to the cerebrovascular surgery. Here in China, Moya Moya disease is extremely com common. So my friend Shubin has done more than 8,000 bypasses for Moya Moya disease. And in my hospital, they are doing 600 bypasses a year. So this is a different game. Depends on the country and culture and the diseases, what you see. Also, if you do carotid surgery, bypasses for cerebrovascular insufficiency, then you can find a lot of uh, field. And maybe the times will change. New indications are coming. Big competition. Yeah, that's right. Okay, on behalf of CN, I'd like to thank you again, Dr. Ernest Niemi. This has been a wonderful lecture. We are really grateful and honored for your participation in the 2021 IWBNC. Okay, thank you very much. My best greetings to Colombia and elsewhere. Thank you very much, sir. Bye-bye.
Bye bye. Uh, for all the audience, keep in mind this lecture will be available on our website starting next week. We have been delighted with such high profile lectures from world renowned neurosurgeons today. We hope you will be able to connect to our broadcast tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. EDT. Do not forget to check the program schedule on our website. And thank you and a good night. Thank you very much.